Good morning, folks. The SpaceX images are a few days old, but if you haven't seen them yet, they're pretty cool. First commercial space flight will be docking with the ISS soon. Great articles today. Apparently, our planet's changing core was responsible for our atmosphere. China can be looked at as a world economic indicator as much as the United States can. It's worth watching in its entirety, unlike the Iran theater, which is just a show by the elites against poor foreign people. And really doesn't look like they were expecting this picture to be taken at that time, does it? How appropriate, given the subject matter of the article. Hemorrhagic fever has hit outbreak status in the Philippines. East Asia better get ready for San Vu. The tropical storm became a typhoon since we last spoke. She isn't exactly stopping. We had a five-pointer on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, multiple large quakes south of Australia, and a six-pointer off the coast of Japan. Having a look at the solar wind, the yellow is the speed. It is coming back down, although still more than 50% higher than what we'd call ambient levels. Above that, the orange, the solar wind density, is falling off totally. You can see that charged particle bombardment waning here as we enter the new day. Despite the fading geomagnetic instability, you can see the underlying vulnerability of our system. We still have multiple variations upon different frequencies. The last 24 hours of the sun? Boring, but who's to say that's bad? The active regions are not flaring, filaments are calmly staying seated. When we pull up the magnetogram and the intensity gram next to each other, the two biggest visible regions are either magnetically simple or turning out of sight and out of danger. Looking on the southeastern limb, we see a tiny active region turning in, but look at the red and blue mixing, it already has significant complexity. Dear Mercury, step up your hide and seek skills. We see you creeping behind the sun there. Now while we won't see him back there obviously, the moon will be dancing next to Mars at that time, then moving on to hang out with Saturn for two nights as Mercury steps out from behind the sun to conjoin Venus. And as that happens, the moon's monthly perigee, her closest approach to the Earth, is June 3rd. June 4th is the full moon and lunar eclipse, only visible for California, Japan, China, and our friends down under. All that in the next 11 days followed one day later by the Venus transit. You will be dead when it happens again, so you might want to check it out. This is how you'll know if you can see it. That's the news, folks. Be safe.